Welcome back. It's flat for the Nifty. So 55.70 on the Nifty. It's come off from the high point of the day, but it's also come off from the low point of the day. And in the mid-cap space, IT is quite weak, despite the pressure that we've seen in the rupee. So Hexaware is seeing a cut of about 5 odd percent. But even the others, like a Tech Mahindra, a Mahindra Satyam, a KPIT come in, Subex, the entire IT back is under a bit of pressure. Even some of the others, like a Mindtree, have seen a cut of close to about a percent and a half. So IT is trading with a bit of weakness in today's trade. But for now, let's turn our attention to our personal finance segment, Hemant Rustogi, a Vice Invest Advisor, is our expert for the day. Hemant, you know, a lot of mutual funds declare their dividends around this time. But there, is there a lot more than meets the eye? You know, in a sense, is this an opportunity for investors to buy into funds, you know, buy into these MFs on the back of dividends? Or would you recommend they take a more of a cautious approach? Well, I would say that I think it's very important for investors to realize that dividend declaration or dividend payment is a normal activity from a fund. Now you have debt funds on one side. Uh, now these are the funds which typically give you a dividend on a very regular basis. There are funds that give you a dividend on daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis, and so on. On the other hand, you have equity and equity oriented balance funds that generally pay dividend uh, you know, once in a year. And most of these funds end up paying dividend in the last three or four months uh, of the financial year. So you're right, I think you're going to see a lot of dividend announcement from now on, especially uh, the equity fund. And these are basically the funds, especially the equity fund that catch the fancy of investors. I think there are a couple of reasons for that. One is that the quantum of the dividend, and second is its tax-free status. But I think uh, there are many investors who believe that you know, investing before a dividend uh, is a great strategy. But I think there are a couple of things they need to consider before doing that. One is they need to understand that the dividend which is paid is paid on the face value of the unit. And the second is that the NAV of the fund goes down by the dividend amount once the dividend is paid. For example, if there is an investor who invests around, let's say, 1 lakh rupees in a fund uh, which has NAV of 40 rupees and the dividend declared is 10 rupees on a face value of 10, which is 100 percent, once the dividend is paid, the NAV will come down to 30 rupees. So mm. what happens is he gets 25,000 rupees as dividend, mm. and the value of investment goes down to 75 percent, 75,000. Mm. See, it, does, it, it really does not benefit him in any way. He's, he's getting his own money back, and it defeats the very purpose of investing in equity because equity are essentially meant for long-term investment. So as against 100,000, only 75,000 is invested for the long term. So I think he, in that case, investor is going to be a loser. And there are a couple of other things also I think investors need to realize before making a decision to invest in a fund just before the dividend is paid. One is many investors believe that uh, a fund which is giving dividend is, is performing very well. I think let me just clarify uh, to all the investors that dividend payment has nothing to do with the performance. A fund which is five year old or ten year old can actually book profits and pay you dividend. Now, it does not necessarily mean that it's actually doing very well. To assess the performance of a fund, one has to look at two aspects, which is total return, which is a you know, difference between the NAV plus the dividend appreciation. It should not be a dividend alone. Mm -hmm. Second thing is when you focus too much on dividend, mm -hmm. what typically happens in that case is that either you end up investing in a fund which does not suit you, or like I said earlier, may not be doing very well. So uh, I believe that someone who wants to invest for a long term, especially in equity fund, should be opting for growth option and not, not in the dividend option. So it is, uh, it is true that we're going to see a lot of dividend announcement from now on, but I think investors need to be very, very careful before uh, they rush to invest in these funds. They should go with their own asset allocation, go for fund which have been doing very well consistently, mm -hmm. not only looking at dividend. And as I mentioned earlier, if the objective is to make the money grow over a period of time, go for growth option. But if someone who wants a regular income, then you can look at dividend option. But there again, look at total return rather than looking at only uh, dividend payout. Fair enough. Uh, let that not be the key decision-making uh, factor is what you're saying. Well, the other issue we wanted to ask you really is about uh, the recent announcement that came from SEBI uh, to re-energize mutual funds. Let us leave out those factors which are, you know, basically giving more expenses, allowing more expenses uh, so that your sales agents get more money. Uh, if you can stick to only those factors that retail investors should know. Well, I think uh, I would say that the recent announcement for SEBI is a mixed bag for investors. And like you said, uh, if you leave out the expense part, uh, see, one of the things that SEBI has mandated is that mutual funds should have only one plan. Now, earlier we used to have this multiple plans like retail plan, institutional, super institutional. Uh, now there is only one plan. Now these were basically generally there in the debt fund. So most of the debt fund would have these two or three plans. Mm. 
most of the equity fund uh, would have maybe one or two plans. So even where there are more than one plan, what the mutual funds have done is they have retained the retail plan, which means that it does not impact the retail investor at all. Mm. Even on the debt side, if they have discontinued the retail plan, the existing plan which is there, the retained plan which is there, is actually going to charge investors less. So I believe that if retail investors switch into the retained plan, they can actually lower their expenses. And also let me clarify that it does not actually make a difference to their existing investment. That continues. Another, uh, I think, important factor from retail investor point of view or, uh, is that any application which is about 2 lakh, okay, mm. the date of acceptance is, is going to be different now. Earlier, any application of 2 rupees 1 crore, the date of acceptance used to be the date on which you submitted the check. Mm. But now, with the revised rules, any application which is more than 2 lakh, the date of acceptance is going to be the date on which the mutual fund receives the money for investment. Now, this is obviously uh, a great news for the existing investor because the new investors can now participate in the plan only after they parted with the money. Now, earlier what was happening was that if you gave my application today, even though the fund was getting money after two or three days, mm. you started uh, you know, participating in the plan. So I think that is one. Third important factor is that the SEBI has asked you know, mutual funds to set aside an amount equivalent to two basis point of its uh, average net assets. Now, this is going to be a, a huge amount. Now, if this money is spent judiciously and in a proper manner, I think this can ensure that uh, there is much better investor education. And also, I believe that with the increased knowledge over a period of time, we can expect retail investor to participate in the decision-making process rather than you know, completely relying on others. Another important factor which is going to be uh, implemented from 1st of Jan 2013 is introduction of direct plan. Now, the basic purpose here is to allow investors to invest directly, which was which already existed. But now the difference is that if investors opt for a direct plan, in that case, the expenses are going to be lower. Mm -hmm. Now, it remains to be seen as to how much the difference is going to be in retail plan and the other plan. Mm -hmm. But I must say here that only those investors who believe who can make independent decisions should be opting for that. Uh, if in their effort to try and save some cost, can actually prove very costly over the longer term if they're not able to make proper selection. So I think they need to, investors need to really assess their own capabilities in terms of whether they can make independent decision or not. Mm. If they can, by all means they should do that. They can actually, like I said earlier, they can reduce their cost. But if not, I think it will be better if they continue to take uh, professional help. Fair enough. Uh, we take a break. We have some viewers lined up with questions. Welcome back. We have been speaking with Hemant Rastagi uh, on uh, what are the advantages of the new SEBI guidelines as well as uh, whether you should be worried about when funds uh, uh, declare their dividend and whether that should impact your investment decisions. And Hemant's point has been that that should not be uh, an important factor at all. But viewers are here with uh, their questions. R.K. Gupte is calling from Pune. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Gupte. What is your question? Uh, the question is, uh, basically there are so many mutual funds and so many schemes among mutual funds. What mm. is the best strategy to uh, zero in on a fund? Secondly, uh, how do you, uh, is there a website where I can track all the mutual funds uh, with their performances? And a lot of funds like HDFC 100 to top 200 have very high NAV. Mm. For small investors, it, does it make sense to enter into such high NAV stock, uh, mutual funds? Mm. That's such honest to goodness questions, I must tell you, Mr. Gupta, it would really rankle with every investor, these kinds of questions. Uh, go ahead, uh, uh, Heman. Well, I think let me begin with saying that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the right way to select a fund is to first decide as to in which asset class you want to invest your money, whether it should be equity and debt, rather than going straight away to the product. Many investors make that mistake of, you know, if somebody says that this is a good fund, uh, why don't you invest in that? and it often results in either overexposure or underexposure in a particular asset class. So the right way is decide your asset allocation, then go for a fund. Go for a fund which is performing consistently. Even when you look at fast performance, look at longer term performance, don't look at last six months or one year performance. Uh, as far as uh, getting information is concerned, I think there, is, there are a lot of sources from where you can get information. There are websites of mutual funds, there are uh, you know, print media, there is electronic media which gives a lot of information on that. And there's a portal like uh, moneycontrol.com where you can get a you know, lot of information on every fund that you want and in fact even on the strategy that you should be adopting for uh, you know, zeroing on in a fund. Uh, the second uh, part that you said that there are some funds which have done very well but their NAV is very high. Let me just clarify that 
the higher NAV or lower LAV has nothing to do with the performance. It's a myth that when investors believe that if they invest in a fund which has a lower NAV, the performance is going to be better. Let me give one example. Suppose there are two funds. One has an NAV of 400 rupees, other one has 15 rupees NAV. And if both happen to have one stock, let's say Infosys, if Infosys goes up by 3% or 4%, both will get the same benefits. So what really matters is the quality of the portfolio. So go for a fund which has a good quality portfolio. And like I said, go for a fund which has been performing consistently. Uh, don't look at NAV level at all. It, it, it does not make any difference at all as far as uh, investors are concerned. Fair enough. Uh, thanks a lot, Hemant, for those uh, answers. Uh, Mr. Gupta, I hope it has answered. Uh, I mean, a stock like SBI will be 2,000 rupees. There will be a lot of penny stocks at even 20 pies. But when you pay a good price, you get a good stock. Uh, that's uh, the word coming in from uh, our uh, personal finance expert. We have to take a break. Up next, uh, a check on last week's iron ore auction in Karnataka. Uh, we will be joined by Mr. R.K. Goel, the managing director of Kalyani Steel, for a perspective on the sector.